This is a Hot Pie Original. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the DMP CD Sports Podcast. I'm Chad Fisher alongside my co-host, Tony Farmer. Tony, what's up, brother? Dude, I'm having a good day. I'm excited that we got Zach Banner on the show. We got a starting tackle for the Steelers, and he's a funny dude, yeah, so I've heard I think that, there's going to be a lot of laughs. Yeah, I heard that he's, a, that he's a really funny, cool dude, man, so everything I've read about him makes me super excited about this, man. We're going to um, uh, find out about him, get to know him as a person and everything, so can't wait to talk to him, man. He's going to be a starting right tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers this year. Gonna be, uh, he's a young guy coming off an injury, so it's gonna be awesome to talk to him, brother. For sure. Before we get into that, though, Chad, could you tell us uh, a little bit about one of our favorite sponsors? Yeah, Odd let's Shark? do that, man. Odd Shark is your source for the latest odds from leading authorities, uh, authorities, authorities, <laughs> expert editorial content, the hottest sports news, and detailed matchup picks. Looking for statistics and trends for an upcoming game? Odd Shark has that too, and it's right. In-depth, expert analysis, odds, and trends to help you make the sharp game day picks. They've got decades of stats in their databases, and their insiders give you takes so hot they sizzle. Mmm, that's hot. They're your one-stop shop for all your odds info on sports and pop culture events. Want to get a better understanding of the odds and the math behind the numbers, how the line is set, why the lines move during the week on the NFL odds list, Odd Shark will give you all the tools you need. They're a proven industry powerhouse. Oddshark has info from around the globe, giving you the chance to access the best sports odds on the planet. Whether you want to check out tonight's football odds, this week's hockey or basketball trends, or anything in between, head on over to Oddshark and start thinking like a shark today. Uh, awesome website. You got to check it out. And we're on there right now to look at futures for the a- uh, AFC North. Uh, we're going to be interviewing Zach Banner, a Pittsburgh Steeler. So let's talk about the AFC North and the odds that uh, the, the teams there have. I'm looking at it. Uh, I'm on oddshark.com right now. And Baltimore is at plus 115. Okay. Uh, Cincinnati plus 2,200. Uh, Cleveland, the Browns, uh, plus 150. And Pittsburgh, uh, Zach's team is plus 400. So there's some interesting teams there. There's three teams that could legitimately win that that division. And if there's an injury or two, as there is with every division, you never know what could happen. Cincinnati, Joe Burrow is going to be healthy this year. But the two three teams I'm looking at, obviously, are Baltimore, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh. Those three teams, uh, uh, you know, Pittsburgh won the AFC North last year. Cleveland, you know, made a little bit of noise in the playoffs. It's going to be interesting to see what they got. What are you thinking about on on these numbers here? I'll tell you, man. I'll go a little contrarian from you because from a betting perspective, it's hard for me to ignore 20 to 1 on pretty much anybody in the yeah. NFL because there's so much parity. Now, do I, with a gun to my head, think the Bengals are going to win the division? Probably not. Yeah. But at those odds, I do see a little bit of value there just to throw a couple bucks on it. Yeah. Um, outside of that, man... Ah, oh, it's tough to go against the Ravens and John Harbaugh. Yeah, I, I just have you. so much respect for that guy. Great regular season team as well. Yeah, man, know. I have so much respect for that guy. I do think, um, you know, Lamar Jackson's going to have a good season. Uh, I remember Adam Levitan was really high on Lamar Jackson as yeah. well. He thought he was going to be the number one fantasy quarterback when we had him mm. on. And so I like the Ravens' chances a lot. That would probably be my, my number two after the Bengals line. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, they've got a good number there. Uh, and Cleveland's 150 and Pittsburgh's plus 400, you know what I'm saying? So uh, they were – last year, you know, they were setting the world on fire the first 11 games of the season. Yeah. They got in a little bit of a trouble. Undefeated. Got, yeah, undefeated yeah. to start the season. Uh, the last undefeated team in the NFL last year. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what type of year Ben uh, Ben Roethlisberger has, bouncing back from uh, from last year and that loss to uh, the Browns in the playoffs. This is going to be a very interesting division because there are three teams that can legitimately win this. And it's going to be a three-horse race. That's going to be a very, very tough division. Those guys are going to beat up on each other. They're each playing each other twice. You know, It's going to be uh, really interesting to see what happens in the AFC North this year. For sure. And speaking of those Steelers, let's get right to it, man. Let's yeah. start interviewing Yeah, let's uh, not Zach. even mess around. Let's get right to the interview with Zach Banner here. All right. Our guest today was a five-star recruit and a top 20 player in the country. He went to USC where he made 37 starts, was a two-time All-American and captain his senior season. And he also played basketball for the Trojans for a year, which is crazy. Uh, He won USC's Community Service Award. He went on to be a fourth-round pick by the Indianapolis Colts in 2017 and has played for the Cleveland Browns. He was briefly a member of the Carolina Panthers and is currently entering his fourth year with the Pittsburgh Steelers, where he is a fan favorite and a starting right tackle. Please welcome to the show, The Hawk. Zach Banner, how you doing, brother? Thanks for coming on the show. Guys, thanks for having me, brother. Appreciate you. Yeah, man. Uh, there's so much stuff we want to get into, man, because I did a lot of research on you, man. I see, I, I've noticed like you're a pretty cool dude, pretty laid back dude. You like to have fun, but you get after it as well, man. So I think it's going to be really fun. 
Uh, I saw that your teammates let you DJ in the weight room, man, which is cool as hell. I saw you and, and that you had some really good taste in music. I want to uh, give you a little suggestion. I think you should just randomly sometimes throw on some Michael Bolton or something like that just to keep everybody on their toes a little <laughs> bit. You know what I'm saying? Well, actually, it's funny that you said that. Uh, today, today's uh, it was, well, I, I like to have these like um, themes, right? Yeah. During the week, I, except there's honestly two themes for Wednesday and Friday. Friday's Feel Good Friday. Okay. And nice. then Wednesday is definitely White Boy Wednesday. Oh, we don't shit. Play <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we don't play enough rock. We don't play enough, uh, you know, the oldies. We don't play enough <laughs> country. We don't get it. And, you know, a lot of the white guys, they're the minority. Now. Yeah. Right. So they, uh, we, we, we definitely, make their day on Wednesday, but today was Feel Good Friday, and we had some Barry White playing. Oh, there you go, Ooh. man. What's up? That's yeah, what I'm talking about. Very smooth. Very smooth. Um, a whole um, bunch of grown men lifting to Barry White. Hell yeah, yeah. dude. It's just uh, on White Boy Wednesday, you all be playing some uh, George Michael and stuff, too? A little Karma Chameleon? <laughs> George Dog. Michael. There you go. Uh, Elton John. Oh, yeah. Back, Backstreet Boys. <laughs> oh. Everything. Bro. Not all white people listen to that, just FYI. I just want to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> Not all white people get down like that. Some white people like to see. I listen to some Van Morrison, you know what I'm saying? I get some Marvin Gaye action, you know what I'm saying? I got some good taste. I don't just listen to uh, white bread stuff, I'll be honest, man. But I got to ask you, brother. I mean, you uh, get so mad. You get so mad. So like, mad. man, what? Get, get tired of listening to Little Baby and hip-hop all week and rap all week. They're like, hey! Hey! You want our stuff? Hey, you want some Brooks and Dunn? Damn it. Put some Brooks and Dunn on, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta ask you, brother. Uh, I used to be a wedding DJ back in the day, and uh, I saw that uh, you do bar mitzvahs and uh, birthday parties. Is that right, bro? You, you you have done. You guys have done your research. Yeah, uh, dog. Dude, I did. I haven't actually DJed. So the the, the, the funny the fun fact of it is, is, I actually got into DJing like legit. I had like a, it was like a two hundred dollar turn. To- yeah, connected to the same laptop that I have. But um, I used to DJ at frat parties. I used to DJ at like some of our house parties and then legit like started like making like appearances my junior and senior <laughs> year. Can't be paid for it. Right. Yeah. Right. So we, we were not able to use our likeness yeah. back in the day like these kids can today. But um, I haven't DJed at a wedding or bar mitzvah yet, but I, I plan on and I definitely plan on doing a solid hour at my own wedding one day. That's awesome, sure. brother. I, I, I got to ask you, man. So if you did uh, like uh, parties and stuff like that, I'm sure you had this happen to you because this happened to me all the time. When you have some insanely drunk person come up to the DJ booth and want to start telling you what you should play next. Like, hey, you should play some Kenny G <laughs> and then some Reba McIntyre. Like, dude, don't worry it's about horrible. it. Yeah, it's, it's so horrible. It's horrible because you can tell if they've had a few beers or, yep. or, or, or they tasted the jungle juice or whatever. <laughs> and, and it got to a point where my fraternity, ZBT, I was part of Z, uh, Z, I am part of, you know, you want your part of brotherhood. Yeah. You're in yep. the rest of your life. Um, we had a lifeguard tower. Oh, made. wow. Or like the DJs and stuff. And and my big ass would get up there (laughs) and there wasn't enough space. You know what I'm saying? So they they used to have to, so they would just be yelling up and I'm like, yeah, 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 I got you. (laughs) Yeah, that's next. That's next, dog. I promise. That's next. I got you. That's oh, is, Zach, on a more serious note, man, uh, really important. How is your knee doing? How are you feeling health wise? I know you've been getting up at 4 a.m. working your ass off. Where do you think you're going to be when training camp starts in terms of your health? Definitely feeling really, really great. Um, it's it's a blessing, right? Because as you guys said, I'm going into my fifth year in the National Football League. And, you know, coaches and everybody have been telling me and reassuring me, you know, because you try not to get in your own head during this rehab process. Right. And you try not to overly communicate because you don't want to show you're scared. And and I have no fears, but you're hesitant because this is my first injury This is my first time dealing with something like this. So I have questions and the importance is, is week one, Mm -hmm. you know, and coming off these last four years, three years before last year and really like fighting for a roster spot to now being in the leader leadership role in the starting role and getting myself ready for 17 games and playoffs. And, um, you know, they, they mentioned that there might be some preseason action um, next week. They're going to walk me into it. You know, I'm not going to do every single rep and I'm just not going to, you know, I'm not going to rush it, but as for my knee, I'm running, I'm cutting, nice. I'm, I'm coming out of my stance Nice. They just they they want to make sure not only there's a year on the knee, which luckily I got injured week one last year. 
Um, and also just to do it smart because, you know, you, you don't want to re-injure yourself. You don't want to do something wrong. Right. You don't want any setbacks. And we haven't had any of these last 10 to 11 months. So I'm truly blessed, blessed bro. And, and it's, it, it's really exciting. Yeah, uh, you you mentioned that. So unfortunately, you tore your ACL and MCL in the first game of the season last year. I, obviously, that was tough as hell. But for the people that weren't around you, how difficult was that? Because you were you were gonna you were the starting right tackle at that point, and uh, after finally getting your opportunity to start, it ends so abruptly. I'm sure there had to be some dark days during that time, right? Yeah, man. I mean, dude, like not only so when COVID, you know, COVID hit last year, mm. and so there was just restrictions to like how many people could be in the building and how many could be on the field. And, and, you know, I was getting tested every day, just like everyone else in the league. Um, but you know, the coaches wanted me to be smart about it. And other than going to work on your motion for like the first two weeks or not two weeks, two months, um, you know, six to eight weeks where you're working on the motion and you're just working on the swelling, you know, and, and that's basically just ice and elevation. So after an hour in the morning, cause you guys know I'm an early morning guy, I would like to be there before the guys got there. So that way, you know, I got to at least say hi and, and get some kind of interaction. But after that, my mom and dad and my brother, they were switching out, um, coming back from Seattle, flying over and taking care of me. We just go home and, I used to elevate my knee for the rest of the day, play video games. And wow. when it got to game day um, for those first two months, and then it just kind of carried throughout the season because, well, you know, being on IR, they didn't allow IR guys to be on the field or in the locker room. Yeah. So I was going to be in the suite yeah. for home games. You know what I mean? So coach was just like, hey, don't even bust your ass to get over to the stadium. There's no point. And so I was just watching the team, Damn. literally seeing the team every day during the week for an hour. And then just watching on TV, just like you guys. So, I mean, it, 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 I felt useless, you know, and I told him that I said, how can I help the team? And he just told me, he said, 2021. Wow. Mm. That's gotta be hard. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Wow. I know you but just they sound- were very, very supportive. You good. know, my, my, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you're good, man. My, the, 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 you know, the other, the, the other four starters and a bunch of guys on the O line, uh, the, the other four starters showed up at the hospital the day after my injury. Wow. Oh, wow. And then they, uh, after my surgery, I said, sh- should say, and a wow. bunch of guys came over and just chilled and vibed and picked up my spirits. And my family was very, very supportive through the time. So it was, it was dark at first, but I mean, once you start like checking off those check boxes in your rehab, you know, you start getting back, back in more. And then, they, and then you, after a few months, you transition half weight room, half training room, and then you're no longer in the training room. When you check, when you check off those boxes, man, I mean, I mean, I remember one time when I first ran, when I first got cleared to run and we're just doing high knees, like basics, like 20 yards down and back, like six times, bro, I broke down. Cause it was just, it just, it's yeah. been so long mm. since I felt that, you know what I mean? I was breathing heavy. I was, I was laughing, yeah. but I was, I, I just broke down because I was breathing heavy for the yeah. first time in a few months. <laughs> yeah. Wow, man. I know you decided to, speaking of your rehab, you decided to do all your rehab in the Steelers facility. And uh, admittedly, you're not a big rah-rah speech guy, but I know you wanted your teammates to see you go through this process and go through this struggle. Do you think now looking back that that's kind of impacted your leadership style, having them sort of see you actually go through that really tough process? Yeah. I mean, I think it was, it was not only the way I busted my ass during camp and that Mm. off season before. Mm. I mean, there was one time where you know, I was in a tackle battle and, and, and my boy shoots, he was down for the day for, for, with a groin. And I legit took 40 of the 40 team reps wow. in one practice, you know what I mean? And, and, and I'm not saying that to, to pat myself on the back. Right. I acknowledge the fact that I've been signed and given the assigned, you know, accordingly and given this leadership role um, for the offensive line and coach T has, you know, voiced that to not only myself and the public, but that responsibility kind of came through not only that respect that I earned, the effort, you know, going into the game, the effort that I, you know, the stuff, the 60 something plays that I did put on film, but also, like you said, that rehab process, like, you know, a lot of us at the professional level, we have access and money to, to go around the world and, and work with specialists. And it was proven Heath Miller who played here for a very, very long time yeah. at 
tight end. He had the same similar su- surgery and he played on for another five to six years. So, mm. um, and he rehabbed with the same people and the same trainers and the same staff that I rehab with. And it's not surprising that it went so well, they've done it before. I just, I just kind of had to put a little bit, um, you know, selfish motives aside and stay, stay here in the Berg. And I'm happy I did it. Yeah. Uh, Zach, your injury, it came in a contract year, unfortunately. Uh, you, and you had other offers, but you said you wanted to stay in Pittsburgh. Coach Mike Tomlin reached out to you and he said, quote, we're going to get this deal done. What was that like for you to have coach T believe in you after you came off a, a big time injury? Man, it's just forget about the injury after the last four years of having to prove myself in the national football league. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I, during those, you know, you mentioned those uh, other three teams before, no, no diss to them, but sometimes when I left a meeting, you know, with them or whether they said it to my face or I had heard that they had vo- voiced it to my agent, they had said, um, you know, he just doesn't have it. You know, he's, he's not athletically gifted enough to, uh, to, to, to do this, you know, to play in this league and, and he's, you know, he's not in shape enough. He doesn't care about the game enough. And that just hurt me because obviously I was going through some weight issues, but I, you know, to hear that from the best coach in the national football league, in my opinion, um, it felt great. And like you said, it's a contract year. And, um, this is, this is still somewhat of a way of a veteran prove it contract. Yes. I'm very blessed because I make a little bit more money than some others, but at the same time, like it's not what I've dreamed about my whole life. In mm-hmm. my opinion, I haven't hit my second contract yet and I, I'm still grinding. And I, I grind with that chip on my shoulder, just like that. I'm very, very humbled in the opportunity that I have and the responsibility that I have. But at the same time, I, I just I, I really want more for myself personally, but I also want more for our team. That's you know, when we fell short last year, that really hurt our organization. That really hurt some guys on our team and, and hurt some spirits. And to lose a bunch of the OGs to retirement or, you know, Al going going over to the other side of the AFC North, like mm. it, it, it really, really, really kind of left a sour taste in our mouth. And, and that's that's part of my job to help fix, you know, in that one spot out of 11 on the offense and out of 22 on the field. Yeah. Uh, We talked about coach T there for a little bit. He's one of my favorite coaches in the league because I love his no nonsense style of answering questions and interviews and the accountability that he holds himself to and his players to as well. You recently, you recently said that coach Tomlin is a mentor and a father figure to you. While a lot of people in the league, you said while a lot of people in the in football pose this tough exterior and masculinity, coach T preaches family and uh, you've experienced a lot. You, you've admittedly experienced a lot recently, death in the family, which is something I've also had to endure. Um, can you tell us what it's like have a coach T there for you, helping you along the way. What does his leadership and friendship mean to you? You said that uh, a person experienced all of the stuff that you went through could easily break, but you didn't because of him. How has he helped you through these challenging times? Yeah, and prayers to you and your family, bro. Thanks, brother. The situation that you go through personally, but I, you know, man, like so much happened. Like, like you said, I, I lost, I lost a couple of family members, and. Um, I, I, I ended up losing my dog three weeks Damn. after my I'm sorry, injury mm. and, um, mm. man, like those are dark times and, and we all go through it as human beings and we all have to lean on family and friends. Right. And I have a lot of friends out here and, and I do consider my team, my family, my brothers. I, that's really how I, I live and how I play, but my family truthfully is on the West coast you know, and, and they're thousands of miles away or on the island of Guam. And, you know, my, my mom, my dad, my brother and sister, you know, they did a really, really good job in, in taking time off work. COVID kind of helped during the time where they could work from home. But um, to, 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 to respond to what you asked, that missing link was definitely Coach T and this football team mm. and my teammates. Because I, I know this, you know, he didn't do it in front of me, but he, I know that he asked guys to put their arm around me because that's, that's just his personality. That's just mm. the way he is. Not only is he the winning his black coach in the national football league history, but he's also just, man, he's just like, yeah, he'll cuss somebody out if they need it. Right. Like he's just, he's a football coach, just like anybody else. But this was a very veteran group when I first got here, um, very older group, especially on the offensive line. And we're all professionals. So as long as we take care of our business and take care of football, his number one priority is us. 
And like, I'm mm-hmm. telling you right now, I had five or I had four head coaches in college at SC and I had five offensive line coaches. And some of them are personable, but it's very, very rare to find an authentic personable coach in the National Football League, especially a head coach who's been doing it as long as he has and won as many games as he has and doesn't treat you as a statistic. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, Absolutely. man. He seems he definitely ev- uh, exudes that. Like just from we're, we're not with him and around him like you are and stuff, brother. But just from the the many interviews that I've watched him give, he's always seems like a very genuine dude, authentic. As and hell, I also yeah. heard that he's like he's kind of a goofball sometimes too, man. I heard I read about how <laughs> yeah I heard that he likes to instigate shit with the offense and defense. So he'll come up to the defense and say, oh, the "Offense, talking about that? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah." So <laughs> I want to know: Do people still fall for it, or have they caught on? Do they know that he's just talking? It's shit? not even about falling for it. <laughs> It, it is. It starts off with a with a very basic lie. Yeah. Right? Like it, it starts off with like a fib. Like, man, you know, TJ. Like, Zach hasn't really lost a rep, and I don't know how long. Like, yeah. what are you gonna do about it? Just, you know, TJ really doesn't talk like that. He doesn't talk crap until after he does a great play, and then he talks. He does. He definitely talks shit for yeah, sure. Yeah, but, yeah. but like. <laughs> then it turns into like that, and he's like, "Oh, Zach, did you see that?" And it's just like turning <laughs> that. But it's just—it's really hard to explain. But if you're there, you'll understand because he'll just poke, and then he'll just let it. He'll just cross his arms and just walk away and smile because he knew he just like set off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Stirring that pot, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah stirring the pot. That's yeah, yeah. Great turn. That's awesome. Hey, Tony, let's take a quick second to tell everybody about one of our favorite sponsors. That's right, Chad. 1740 Beard Bomb. You can find out more about them from 1740beardbomb.com. I'm holding their signature product right here. Chad, you want to get the other one in this shot yeah. here, too, for people that are watching on YouTube? There <laughs> we go. Um, they've got some really cool designs on here. They, they smell really cool as well. Chad, you're such a goofball. These things are uh, pretty cool. Again, they've got other stuff, too. They've got chapstick. Vanna White, nice. Mm. They've got some chapstick as well. They've got some beard soap. So check out 1740 Beard Bomb. Com. They've also agreed to send you some free product. They're going to take mm. care of the shipping and everything as well as gift cards. All you have to do is engage with us on social media. Please and send engage us with us, please. A funny please. text, uh, screenshot that your friend has sent you. It could be about sports or not. And you'll get rewarded as long as we read that on the air. Well, make sure you check them out 1740beerbomb.com. <laughs> Hey, we love offensive linemen on this show. We had uh, Randy Cross, Jesse Sapolo on. Uh, more recently, we had Ken Ruckers on. Um, and Ken was telling us some story of some pranks in the locker room. Uh, Vaseline on the helmet, baby powder in the helmet, a little icy hot in the jock strap happened in the Packers locker room. I want to ask you, who is the most likely in the locker room to do a prank like that? And can you share any stories with us of, of some particularly good ones that you've seen in NFL locker rooms uh, during your time? Yeah, um, not too many pranks in Pittsburgh and I'm not trying to hide any information, yeah. but you, you put baby powder in Marquis Pounces. Oh, it's going to be your ass. <laughs> it's going to be your ass. So like, <laughs> it's just the prank side is really not a vibe in our locker room. Not mm. yet. At least um, joking with each other, like clowning each other. It definitely is like, you know, sometimes you have to peek over your shoulder and make sure, sh- make sure that uh, <laughs> Juju and uh, Claypool don't have their TikToks on and you're not, you know, uh, <laughs> butt ass naked in the background or you don't have a, you know, a towel around you or something like that. You know, you, but outside of that, I mean, man, we, we really vibe out here and the brotherhood is super strong. Like yeah. we'll make fun of each other. We'll, 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 we'll pick each other up, but then we'll make fun of each other again. And nice. And I think one of the biggest, probably the goofiest people, the goofiest person on the team, off the top of my head, is probably Vince Williams, number ninety-eight, our mm, linebacker. Okay, and he's just the type of guy to, to 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 walk up to somebody and make fun of something about them right then and there. <laughs> but you, it, it's that I'm not. I don't want to put it in like a hazing or bullying yeah, yeah. way. I'm not even trying to cover my own right. self for that or our team. Yeah. It's it's just he's he's hilarious. Yeah. Like he's actually <laughs> funny. Like and so yeah, it's it's hilarious. That's great, man. That's uh awesome. you said uh last year that you owe Colts uh GM Chris Ballard for cutting you. You said that it was a wake up call for you and you wouldn't be here where you are today if he hadn't cut you. What was that like for you? Because you weren't a six round pick, you were a fourth round pick. Those guys are usually expected to make the team and make a contribution. How was that a wake up call for you, Zach? Yeah, it was because he just, you know, there was a couple of different things. They wanted to keep Andrew, um, Andrew Luck off of uh, the PUP list. 
and and IR or something like that. Then and, it, and it's crazy because you know I look back after the year went by when I was in Cleveland and he didn't play that year. Um, but it, it you know not only that and some other positions like DBs that they had injuries on. But when you get to that point at the end of roster cutting, those who are expendable will be you know, dealt with Mm -hmm. and in in whatever way that is, whether it's a trade cut, you know, any of those type of things. And it was, you know, made the original roster on Friday. And then I get a phone call from, you know, one of the assistants saying, Hey, bring in your playbook. I was out with my girl getting my car washed and I looked at her and I was like, Oh my goodness. And she was like, wait, what does that mean? And, And I just didn't say anything. And we drove to the facility. And when I got there, you know, Chris Ballard sat me down and he said, Zach, like, it's really unfortunate how you haven't been able to, you know, maintain your weight and get down and keep it down and things like that. So I'm, I'm doing this because I don't think anybody else needs right tackles. And I'm, you know, cause you, you're put on the waiver wire for 24 hours after you're released right. and then you can get signed to practice squad. So he said, I'm going to, I'm going to wave you today. I'm going to put you on practice squad on Tuesday. And until you get your weight up, um, you, you're going to stay there and then I'll bring you up, man. When I got cut, I got, you know, I was super upset, not, not mad at him, just mad at myself because I, I don't suck at football. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I'm not saying guy, everyone who does get cut or released does, but especially after being drafted and especially after being healthy, I just wasn't in shape. And, um, after I was put on the waiver wire, four teams bid it on me and you, and how it worked at that time. And I think it still does. You go to the team with the worst record the year before. And mm-hmm. I was in Cleveland on Tuesday and um, you just, you know, he texted, he texted me afterwards and he said, Hey, I didn't expect this to happen. Um, but I wish you well. And um, I hope you get it figured out. And he actually had an in-depth conversation with my agent after too and saying, I, I, I really want you to know, and GMs don't do that. You know what mm. I mean? Front office yep. staff don't do mm. that. They, they, they make business decisions every day, every week and every year. So when he authentically called and said, I didn't mean that, and you know, I didn't mean for that to happen, but it's the business and that's the way it goes. I wish him well, stay in touch. I, I, I had no animosity towards him. I still don't. Um, the, the, the couple GMs before that, that, that cut me, you know, that's a different story, but at the same time, it's just, um, you know, I, you know, like I, I take personal responsibility for everything I do. I don't ever, you don't ever want to be play the blame game in this profession or else you won't be here for that long. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Uh, speaking of the Browns, last year, last year y'all were playing the Browns in Cleveland. The last week of the season, Coach T decided to rest some of the veteran players, understandably so. Um, the Browns won that game down the stretch and were able to sneak into the playoffs. And, and we all know what happened next week uh, when uh, the Browns came to town in the playoffs. Do you think, I know you're, you're not Coach T, but do you think he regressed that decision? And it, will that change his approach in the future? Do you think he'll try and just step on the neck if they have the opportunity? Or, or will, will he do the same thing, do you think? No and no. Yeah. I think he would do it again. Wow. I just don't. I, I, you know, when, when we suck on offense, Seven takes it on his shoulders. Ben takes it on his shoulders and says it's his fault when it wasn't all the way his fault. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing goes for Cam and TJ and our other Guys, like individually, we take responsibility as players. Uh, the team had made an executive decision to rest those guys, and we weren't ready to. We were, the the next guys up, and and some of us weren't ready to play. Um, and and it was extremely painful. Like I said, I was at the house, you know, watching this whole thing, and then I'd be in the meeting room, you know, the next day, and just to hear, you know, guys take responsibility mm. for their own actions and their own gameplay. Um, I, I, when you, when you go on that streak, like we did and, and you're as hot and we, you know, we won the, the AFC North that week before that's the best decision. And that's not the first time he did that. They, they, they rested their starters against us when we were 0 and 16 in Cleveland yeah. and we played at the end of the year and Juju wasn't the, the, the main kick returner at the time, but he ended up running a kickback you know, uh, our rookie season. And, and mm-hmm. so at that time, it's, it's the next guy needs to step up and that's not on coach T it's on us as an organization. And I know he's part of that, but I don't think he look. he doesn't, he doesn't think like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's never yeah, yeah. told yeah. me that he'd never talked about it, but we don't think like that. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's, we live and learn through our mistakes and our losses. And, you know, that was a huge loss. 
but we will learn from it. Yeah, definitely. Since you've played for the Steelers and Browns, can you talk to us about that rivalry? You've been on both sides of it. And does that rivalry have renewed meaning for you? I know you kind of alluded to um, some of the other GMs. You don't have the same warm and fuzzy feeling toward. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a little bit of more of a chip on your shoulder when you play the Browns now? Yeah, well, the you know, when you go in 16 and it really wasn't, we weren't able, really able to feel that rivalry when I was in Cleveland. And that's no diss to them, yeah, yeah. respect to them. Uh -huh. But they, those fans on, over, over there in that city understand that, you know, there, there really wasn't too many in the stands. And there were more for the Steeler games, especially we played them week one mm. um, that, that year. Um, but being over here in Pittsburgh and being a part of this organization and this family and this town for as long as I have for these last few years, when they come into town, it's different. When anybody from the AFC North comes to town, it's different. It's not like they have any preferential treatment over the other two teams in our division. But it's – we're the Steelers. And fortunately, you know, that's part of our tradition. Just like it was like playing at USC, you're going to get everyone's best game. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're going to get all the – you know, especially if it's a Monday night football game, Wednesday night football game. AFC North football – uh, it, there's nothing like it. And, and, and those, those four games stick out, you know what I mean? Or, or yeah, how many ever games we played, those games stick out of our schedule. But I will say this, you know, it's in the NFL rivalries are, are really, really, really fan based. Mm. You can't, you can't turn the on and off switch in the national football league. Yeah. Uh, all those teams, especially, you know, Cleveland has miles and they have a uh, Clowney now, and, and you look at Baltimore and their amazing defense they bring in every year, and Cincinnati too. You go against Geno, you go against these guys, like you can't just turn it on against them and turn it off. That's the that's not how it works. Yeah. You don't you don't get you don't win like that and you don't get paid like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I gotta ask you this, brother, because I thought this was hilarious. I've seen you uh when people talk shit about you on Twitter, you've been known to respond hilariously. <laughs> And you said last year, quote, the same men who send me hateful tweets are the same men whose wives wink at me at the stadium. It makes <laughs> sense now. So I was going to ask you, brother, have you ever thought about that? Maybe you you might have smashed some dude's wife and he and he's upset about it <laughs> or <laughs> or maybe on the way home from the stadium, she kept talking about how handsome you was and this pissed him off. And then he's just like getting on Twitter like, oh, I'm about to talk shit about Zach Banner. F this dude in his luscious hair. Fuck this dude. I never. I never well, at least I would never hope for that. And you got to remind me now. I'm in, a, I'm in a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year, so I have to I have to answer this a little differently than I would if I, I interviewed right after that, that tweet. But and all jokes aside, when you guys asked me earlier, you guys asked a question and, and said, you know, who's the prankster and who are those things? Like I, I, I pride myself. I don't want to answer myself, yeah. but I pride myself for not being a stand-up comedian like yourself officially, <laughs> yeah. but definitely, uh, you know, dude, I was five foot in the second grade. I've been big my whole life. Yeah. When, you, when, you, when you're big like this in a very young age and you grow up in the inner city like I did, you know, you're around these older kids, they're ruthless. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have these comebacks. But I just think it's hilarious, especially when you look at something, you know, you know the term Jag, it's just a guy. Mm -hmm. When you look at these dudes' default pictures, if they're brave enough to have it of themselves <laughs> instead of a Steeler logo, yeah. they, they, you look at them and, and, and you're like, are you serious? <laughs> like, like you're, you're the same guy yeah. that if we were, you were sitting across from the whole line at dinner or we were in the same <laughs> restaurant or something, you would say, hey, guys, good luck this season. Yeah. Hey, right. you know, you would support us. Yep. But, but people get really brave when yep. they have this in their hands. So and, and it's, it's sometimes Sometimes you have to check that. And also, too, it's it's just me having fun with the fan base yeah. because one person out of how many ever millions um, that watch us play and support us, you know, they were just being an ass that day. Yeah, you yeah. Gotta shut them up real quick and move on. <laughs> and these dudes ain't going to. Just gonna... like if they would if they're in the restaurant. If they yeah. ever tried doing something <laughs> like that in public. It's over. You know, like if some guy was sitting at his table, yeah. like, regard, like I wouldn't really do it if my girlfriend was here. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't really know if I was in a relationship. But, you know, 
you know, I, 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 do you want me to steal your date? Like, is that, is that really something that you want to happen to me? <laughs> you know what I mean? That would yeah, shut him up quick. Up. That would yeah. shut him up real quick. Yeah. yeah. That would do the trick. Yeah, I think so too, man. Especially, man, you're big as hell, man. Ain't no one talking shit to you. Like some little dude that's like five. Nobody's talking to the Hulk. Five, Nobody's nine. going up talking to the yeah. Hulk like that in yeah. person. No some way. Some dude that's like five nine, 135 pounds soaking wet. Ain't talking shit to this man. Come on. <laughs> oh, and, and so how do you deal with people like that? In a very you got to be silly, man. You got to be silly. Yeah. You can't take it to the extreme that you would if, if, if you weren't in public. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, we're going to ask you, we're going to ask you a couple more questions, brother, and let you go. But I want to ask you about uh, the draft this year. So you guys uh, drafted a lot of guys on the offensive side of the ball. What can you tell us first about Najee Harris? Uh, wh- what to expect from him this year? And then also, uh, uh, that's a guy that we're rooting for big time because off field contributions and everything like that. I followed his career, uh, his recruiting career in high school. I'm a Michigan fan, as I did with you. I hope I was hoping you were coming to Michigan as well. I was uh, I visited Ann Arbor. Yeah, I, I know you did. Ann Arbor I when hope was there. I know you did, brother. And I was hoping like hell that you would come there, man. So I've, I've known about your career and your your uh, your career for a long, long time, man. I've been following it. And I, when you went to USC, I, I was upset about that a little bit, but obviously a good decision <laughs> for yourself. But uh, Obviously, you spent more time with Dan Moore and Kendra Green. How are they coming along? How is uh, Najee coming along? And what do you expect out of those guys this year? Yeah, all, th- all three of them are, are very, very good personality guys. They're coachable. They're approachable. They, they you know, coachable falls under the thing, you know, the line of, I was just about to say, you know, when they make mistakes, they're willing to correct them. That falls under those lines. Um, but, I mean, dude, like, you know, from Najee, he just he just looks different. He's a first round running back. You know what I mean? He sticks out. He plays different. He moves different. You know, we had a very, 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 very light OTA compared to all these other OTAs because, you know, we're, we're protecting ourselves. You know, the NFLPA stepped up this year and really kind of made some demands. And so the coaches met him. But, you know, when you see him, when you see him move, he just moves differently. And, and KG and Dan Moore, like, like I said, they, they, they work really hard and they're extremely approachable and coachable. And that's very, very hard to find in rookies, especially draft picks, especially high draft picks. So I, I, I hope for their success and we're going to need it right away from all three of them in different types of ways. But, um, they're, you know, they're, they're here and they're here to be here for a while. Yeah, uh, it's going to be exciting to see those guys come along as well. Uh, I got to ask you also, brother, you averaged damn near 20 and 20 on your high school basketball team which is impressive, man. And you help uh, win a state championship your junior year. Can you still hoop? Or are they not, are the Steelers not letting you do that? Well, right now, post-injury, no. Okay. But before, what's, what's crazy is, man, I literally, just before COVID, I started picking up a basketball more and putting up pickup shots and playing pickup games out here in Pittsburgh. Um, it's very hard because, you know, as a professional athlete, you and even when I was in college, you have to be smart. Like, when I was actually a legit hooper, um, before and even after my hip surgery that I had in college, which is the reason why I had to stop. You know, I always idolize people like Tony Gonzalez mm-hmm. and Antonio Gates, yep. um, especially Tony who played all the way through all four years. That's something I wanted to do, but I had to make a career decision um, because I, you know, I just needed to, to, to focus in and lock in. And then after that, when basketball left my life, you know, that's when I started gaining all the weight because you're not running up yep. and down the court anymore. More, but um, to to answer your question in a positive light, man, I started hooping more last year, and then COVID hit, so we're not in any gyms. The gyms are closed, but the reason why I, I stepped away from hoops for a while was one because of you know I wasn't home. You know, when I'm back home, I'm hooping with guys like Jamal Crawford and It Isaiah oh, sure. Thomas, wow. uh, Nate Robinson, and those local legends back home in SeaTac area, mm. um, and and people who might play like overseas and to that caliber because you know they're professionals and they're not gonna do no stupid stuff. You know, I'm probably not gonna hoop against you two. Yeah, yeah. Just seeing how you guys look by sitting. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's it, you have to make smart career yeah. decisions. So I promise you though, like very, very soon I, I will start doing form shooting. I will start working on my form, especially during the season. Um, there's, there is no running up and down the court football is football, mm. but when I'm healthy and I have a year, they, they say at 18 months, which is kind of scary. Cause I'll be playing with just a year on, I don't want to mm. use the word scary. Cause I don't want you guys thinking I'm scared, yeah. but when they say, when you get to 18 months, they say your leg feels even better before the injury. Oh wow! Mm. When I get to that, 
then I'll get back to picking up a yeah. picking up a basketball for fun. If you're ever in Austin, man, uh, your boy can hoop a little bit. If you're ever in Austin, man, we can uh, we can go take some people's money and some pickup games. We can do the uh, the old white man can't <laughs> jump rules. You white know, man can't yeah, jump. you can do no. We can do two, Texas. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Part two. There we go. You can just uh, pick pick the goofy ass white dude. I'll be standing over on the on the side by the fence with a CD player, just <laughs> boombox, <laughs> this little boombox accent. He's like, hey, I'll take the goofy ass white dude with the uh, with the cut off t shirt on. Man. Man, That'd be a lucrative day. Can't just <laughs> carry us to a dub. Every dog, time I got some game, man. No, no, dog, I got some game. Promise you, I got some game. Send me man. some film. Send me some, I'll send me some film. Stats. I'm about to. I'll, you I'll, have stats and you have film on my end. I need, I need film. Hey, I uh, fair I, enough. Yeah, I was uh, I, I was a double figure average uh, guy in, in high school and stuff. I wasn't averaging twenty and twenty. How many years ago was that, Chad? Dog, I'm 37 now. Man, <laughs> buddy, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm about to hoop tomorrow, man. I'm gonna send you some film. Be doing a little uh, little shake and bake, a little uh, fadeaway jumper. You can see it in Chad's hair. <laughs> no, man, I actually got hair like you. I just don't want people getting jealous, so I shave this shit. I'm like, man, I can't, I can't be funny and good looking, dog. It can't be both. Well, I thought you were, to be honest with you, to side note, I thought you were Joe Thomas when I first got on this line. That's these guns, so dog. Serious. Yeah, it's because I don't mess around. Yeah, yeah I don't mess yeah. around. I hit the yeah, weights, you know what I'm saying? Compliment now, right? Now, I'm, I'm assuming he's standing here like this the rest of the interview. <laughs> How you doing, Zach? What's up? You need a punter to hit me up, dog. <laughs> your punter gets hurt, man. Let me know. If you're a placeholder, you need someone to hold some field goals, let me know, dog. I'm here. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Oh, uh, uh, Thank you so much for your time yeah. today, man. This was a lot of fun. We really appreciate you coming on, man. It was fun to, to joke around a little bit and also ask you some serious questions, check in on how you're doing, and we're really excited to see you on the field this year, man. Yeah. What, one quick thing, brother, before we let you go, I do want to ask you about the B3 Foundation for students in Guam, Tacoma, Washington, and L.A. Can you tell us what that's about and what you hope to accomplish with that foundation? Yeah, and now Pittsburgh, too. Okay, great. I've nice. at least made this home for a little bit longer, and I plan on being here for the rest of my career. Hell yeah. Nice. Um, and, and, you know, short and simple, B3Foundation.org. Um, we do a lot of great work. Backpack drives. Um, we just gave out a scholarship, our first uh, annual scholarship that we're giving to, we're giving out annually is what I should say. Denise, um, she's a first generation uh, uh, Muslim immigrant for, you know, and, and her and her mother have been homeless her entire life. And, and mm. we named it the Ron and Vanessa Banner Scholarship uh, Fund. Um, where we give her and next year somebody else and the year after and continuing um, uh, for four years, $10,000 each a year, $40,000 in total to contribute to their school and to their college. Mm. And, and, you know, we do a lot of great things in the community. I say we because I have an amazing board. I have an amazing team. Nice. Um, I have, you know, just it's it's a blessing. And, and we do we, we we specialize in mentorship. We specialize in inner city kids. We, we, we do all these things. So um, I appreciate you guys having me, man. Yeah, brother. This was an amazing interview. Um, I appreciate it. Like, it's just fun, <laughs> fun heart. Let's, let's, let's do this again. Yeah, definitely, Absolutely. brother, for sure, man. We would love to have you on again sometime uh, soon. Make sure you go to B3Foundation.org. Also, check them out on Twitter at ZBNFL, on, also on Instagram, at ZBNFL. Zach, you're cool as hell, brother. Uh, we would love to talk to you again, man. You're super funny. We're definitely going to be rooting for you this year, brother, for sure. Shout out to you guys, and good luck with the hair, bro. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that, man. Take care, man. I'm going to be wearing a wig next interview, man. I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> My damnest dog just got this dude just grow some hair real fast. I'm like, yep. Yeah, I had it all it along, man. I had it all It don't even match his eyebrows. What's going on, man? Like, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about yourself, man. <laughs> appreciate it. All right, brother. You guys, man. Take Peace, care, man. man. Take it awesome. easy, brother. Thanks so much. Peace. All right. That was uh, the starting right tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Zach Banner. Such an awesome funny, intelligent guy. So cool to get to know him on a personal level to, uh, for him to take some time out of his day to talk to us was really cool as well, man. Yeah, it was good to get to know him. He was super dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, at one point, kind of messing around with you a little bit, <laughs> joking with you. He also mm -hmm. talked about some dark times and how yeah. difficult mm -hmm. the injuries were at times. He was praising you know, his, his teammates as well. Uh, we got to see a lot of different aspects of his personality and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to, to root for him this year for sure. Yeah, it was awesome, man, because I, I kind of had the feeling that he was an intelligent guy from just what I'd read about him and everything like that, some other interviews that I'd read and watched and everything, but you don't really understand it until you're actually talking to him. And like I said, we were joking around, having a good time, 
uh, hot dogging and everything like that. And then we go and talk about something serious about his injury and the dark times that he went through with that. His ability to to kind of go back and forth and everything yeah. was was really impressive to me. You can tell he's a very intelligent person. Um, he he went to USC and got a good education. He wasn't just there to play football. And he, he seems like a very smart, um, thoughtful person, man. And it was great. It's great to get to know guys like this because a lot of times people think NFL players or athletes in general, these professional athletes are just meatheads and they don't have any other interests and they're not dynamic at all. We saw with Zach Banner, this dude is incredibly, incredibly dynamic, such a uh, such a talented person in so many different areas. And obviously he's incredibly emotionally intelligent as well. Yeah, for sure. And one of the things that sticks out for me from this interview was him just – what he said about Mike Tomlin. Yeah. I was and I'm gonna to say guess, that. I'm gonna guess that if you interview every player in the locker room, they're gonna have very similar things to say yeah. about him. That dude is so awesome. And and my respect for Tomlin, which was already really high, grew even more after this yeah. interview, after hearing what he said. I, I totally agree. As even though I'm a Browns fan, I've always respected Mike Tomlin. He's a great coach. He all like I said to Zach, he always tells it like it is. He holds himself and his team accountable. When he messes up, he tells He'll tell reporters, like, you know, I got to do a better job coaching. I got to call a better play. I got to do this. I got to do that. He never throws people under the bus, and you love that as a player, obviously. And then also just to see, like, the type of relationship that he has with Zach. You know, here's a guy that, you know, had an injury last year. By all means, Coach T, as he calls him, could very easily just been like, oh, you know, well, let's not worry about that guy right now. He can't help us win. Instead, he was talking to this guy. He was Good making point. sure people were taking care of him, that uh, people were putting their arm around him, trying to help him lift him up and everything like that. And then – you know, he, that happened in a contract year and during the off season when uh, his agents going back and forth with a couple of different teams, Coach T calls Zach and tells him straight up, we're going to get this deal done. We want you back with this organization. And then that ended up happening. And Zach returned their uh, their uh, loyalty and decided he wanted to come back and be a Pittsburgh Steeler. That's awesome to hear things like that. And it's awesome to see a coach that believes in him so much. And we're going to be rooting for this guy big time this year, man. No so, so excited for no the doubt. season that he's about to have. For sure. We hope you enjoyed this interview. And we also hope that you'll check us out on social media, that you'll thumbs up this if you happen to be watching on YouTube, if you enjoyed the show. We'd love to get a review from you on iTunes if that's if that's how you're listening to us. Yeah, definitely. Make sure you leave us a review. That'd be great. Tell your friends about the show. Share this on social media. Uh, you know, it's uh, we're just starting out. We're trying to build our following and build our our uh, fan base and everything like that. And I think we're going to continue to do it with some of the interviews that we've got lined up. Some of the interviews we already have, Muhammad Sanu, now Zach Banner, two uh, Austin Eckler, three current uh, NFL players that are going to be playing big roles for the teams this year. Very dynamic, funny, cool guys and everything like that. So we love bringing you these interviews with some of these people, uh, some of these uh, famous athletes, allow you to get to, the, to get to know them on a personal level. And uh, Zach Banner, what a cool, cool, interesting dude, Absolutely. man. Another thing that's really cool is Odd Shark. Odd Shark is your source for the latest odds from leading authorities, expert editorial content, and detailed matchup picks. Are you looking for statistics and trends for an upcoming game? Odd Shark has that too, and it's right. In depth, expert analysis, stats, numbers, and trends to help you make the sharp game day picks. Whether you want to check out tonight's football odds, this week hockey or basketball trends, or anything in between, head on over to Odd Shark and start thinking like a shark today. As they said, they got uh, they got uh, information and they got articles in there that you can read about some of the upcoming events. Uh, they got stuff in there that's going to teach you about sports betting if you don't know that that much about it. If you're a beginning or a, a, big, a beginner or a novice, mm -hmm. go in there and read some of their articles. They're going to break it down for you. They're going to let you know what this number means, what these numbers means, and how these things change and everything like for that. Free, what to like expect you said. for free. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's not many uh, sites that offer that information. And some of the guys, some of the girls and guys that they got writing for them have expert expert analysis and stuff. Absolutely. So you want to make sure you go there. Make sure you look at all the odds. Make sure you're getting the best pick, the best numbers that you possibly can before you make your uh, your picks and everything like that. Like we said, this is all free. Make sure you go to oddshark.com. That's O-D-D-S-S-H-A-R-K.com. They are a staple of the DFP CD Sports Podcast. We go there all the time, man. So we want to thank you guys for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Please tell your friends about the show. Give us a review. Share the episode. Do all that stuff for us. We really appreciate it. For Tony, I am Chad. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Thanks for listening. You can find more episodes and all other Hot Pie Media originals baked fresh daily at our home on the web at hotpiemedia.com the Hot Pie Media YouTube channel, or wherever you listen to podcasts.